Okay, good morning everyone and uh, uh, welcome to class, another new week. Hope all of you had a blessed and a refreshing weekend uh, and all geared up to face another new week. Uh, before we continue looking at uh, children's ministry and how we can impact uh, children in a um, greater way, uh, let's begin with a word of prayer. So can I ask uh, uh, Kennedy, uh, can you please lead us in prayer, please, this morning? Kennedy, can you lead us in prayer, please? Okay, if Kennedy is not uh, able to, can anyone lead us in prayer this morning? Okay, no worries. Shall I some, Yes. Okay, uh, since you've already, you prayed last week, uh, Stavini, we'll ask yeah, you yes, to. No, no. Yeah, no. thank you so much. Yes, go ahead, Sehi. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, Father, bless you. Thank you for uh, the weekend that has passed, and thank you for a new week. And thank you for all we have been learning, pertaining, Lord, raising children in the way of the Lord and finding ways. Lord, to reach out to them at their specific ages. We say thank you, Lord, for our teacher who you have used to impact us with the necessary knowledge so that we'll be able to teach and impact the knowledge of Christ to all our children as they grow. We pray, Father, that this class will give us the wisdom to understand all that our teacher will teach us, instruct us, and that we pray that we will put them to good use all for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Say. So, so far we've been, uh, we began looking at uh, the biblical basis and the mandate for uh, children's ministry. And then we looked at um, the different developmental needs of um, uh, children, the developmental needs of children in different ages. Um, and uh, last week we uh, studied the learning styles and the eight different intelligences. Uh, <coughs> sorry. The learning styles and the eight different intelligences is not just for children, but also it's useful for us as adults, you know, even as uh, we work with uh, different people, minister to different people, have Bible study groups, um, or we are in the youth ministry, teaching ministry, or, you know, we work in the corporate firm or we're teachers in school, uh, uh, you know, or at, even in home when we're teaching our children uh, or when we are uh, relating to adults, these uh, learning styles and the eight different intelligences um, really help us to understand uh, people uh, to, uh, you know, communicate better with them and also to relate with them better and uh, to understand um, their God-given uh, skills and abilities and how to maximize them uh, in their areas of expertise and their skills and their um, talents. And I'm sure those uh, learning styles would have helped you and the eight different intelligence uh, intelligences would also have helped you identify or help you know what are your learning styles and um, uh, the areas of your expertise and uh, where your skills and gifts uh, lie. Uh, today we're going to look at uh, the, the divine role and uh, call. Sorry, the divine call and role of a teacher. Um, uh, you know, when we minister to uh, uh, to people, whether we are teaching, preaching. Uh, sharing the good news of the gospel, evangelism, whatever. There are two main uh, components uh, when we minister to people or when we're teaching uh, the word of God or when we are, uh, you know, uh, sharing the gospel. Two main things. One is uh, a messenger and the other is the message. So two important components, me a messenger and the message. Okay, so the messenger 
when uh, in, in children's ministry, who do you think is the messenger? The we are the messenger. The teacher. Yes, uh, the teachers, those who are teaching. So you identify yourself also as a children's church minister. Uh, so it's basically the teachers, uh, the children's church ministers, Sunday school ministers or teachers who are the uh, messengers. And the message is basically, you know, what we are going to be communicating to the children, what we'll be teaching them, uh, whether it's a, a salvation message or it's about God's love or God's forgiveness, God's compassion or his nature, his attributes, or, uh, you know, teaching them uh, what he has asked us, how we need to live. You know, that is the message. So we'll first look at uh, the messenger and then we will look at uh, the message. OK, um, like us to look at um, uh, Lamentations. Chapter uh, il two verses 11 and 12. So can somebody read that, please? Lamentation two verses 11 and 12. My eyes fell from weeping. I am in torment within my heart. It's poured out on the ground because my people are destroyed, because children and infants faint in the streets of the city. Thank you. So here, you know, uh, uh, when the people of Judah and uh, Jerusalem were carried into captivity, you know, the poor uh, or the really very, very poor people uh, with their children were left, uh, you know, uh, behind in uh, Judah and Jerusalem. And the prophet Jeremiah was left uh, with them. And, you know, many of these, uh, uh, the children of these poor people were starving and they were dying and there was not uh, enough food uh, to feed them. Uh, there was no way to secure food for them. And hence, you know, these children were just dying of um, uh, salvation. And here in Lamentation chapter 2, verses 11 and 12, you know, Jeremiah cries out uh, and he, you know, he says, because uh, why is he crying, wailing, weeping? It's because the children uh, uh, or the infants uh, in this, you know, are fainting in the, in the streets. They're just dying of hunger. And, uh, you know, Jeremiah pleaded uh, uh, with uh, the people uh, to weep and pray. And that's what he says in Lamentations chapter 2, verse um, 19. So can one of you please read Lamentation chapter 2, verse 19, please? Anyone? Arise, yes, go ahead, Asha. Arise, cry out in the night. At the beginning of the night, watches, pour out your heart like water before the presence of the Lord. Lift your hands to him for the lives of your children who faint for hunger at the head of every street. Yes, continue. Do, do verses, uh, okay, Lamentations chapter 2, verse 19, you read? Pastor. Okay. Uh, Okay, so he says, uh, you know, let tears run down um, like a river, you know, one minute, let tears run down like a river by day and night, uh, give thyself no rest, arise, cry out in the night, in the beginning of the watches, pour out thy heart like water uh, before uh, the face of the Lord. And then he goes on to say, um, now lift up thy hands toward him for the life of thy young children that faint for hunger in the top of every uh, street. So here, uh, you know, even as uh, Jeremiah is so burdened uh, to see these young children just, you know, dying of hunger uh, on the streets, he's uh, asking the people, uh, you know, to cry out, to pray, to weep. Uh, uh, to God, asking for forgiveness, asking for his mercy. And, uh, you know, uh, Jeremiah goes on to accuse the people of being very cruel because he says in um, in in verse, in chapter 4, verses uh, 3 and 4. Can somebody read that, please? Lamentation chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. It's on your screen. So can somebody read that, please? Lamentation chapter 4, verse 3 and 4. Lamentations 
4, 3 and 4, even jackals offer their breasts to nurse their young. But my people have become heartless, like ostriches in the desert. Sorry. Yeah. Then go ahead and read it. Because of thirst, the infant's tongue sticks to the roof of its mouth. The children beg for bread, but no one gives it to them. Thank you. So here we see that, uh, you know, he, uh, Jeremiah is accusing the people of being cruel because he's saying that even the animals, you know, feed or nurse uh, their young ones, you know, uh, whether it's the jackals or, uh, you know, the ostriches. Um, but he says that his people, you know, are very cruel. Uh, and he says, you know, the tongue of the infants cling uh, to the roof of its mouth for thirst. There's no, not even water uh, that the parents are providing them. And the young children are asking for bread, but there's no one to feed them. There's no one um, to give them. Now, this was the condition of um, uh, the children, you know, after when um, they were um, taken over, when Jerusalem and Judah was taken over uh, um, and, uh, you know, uh, they were all taken into captivity and these poor were left with their children and there's no ways to, you know, uh, 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 you get food. There was utter poverty and uh, children were just dying and the people were so in, in a condition of hopelessness and frustration and depression that uh, they did not even have uh, uh, this, the uh, the uh, the strength to go and you know uh, get food to feed the children who were dying on the streets. So the condition of children uh, in uh, in Jerusalem, uh, you know, uh, when the, the, they went into captivity, is um, is a physical condition that they were going through. Uh, but you know. Um, it's typical of the spiritual need of children that we see in the world uh, today. So, you know, what we see in what uh, we see and read in what happened in Jerusalem, you know, it was a physical condition, but, uh, you know, we are living in a world where uh, children are dying uh, and there's no one to feed them uh, or meet their spiritual uh, needs. So the condition of children in Jerusalem is typical to uh, the spiritual need of uh, the children in certain parts of the world today or you know in most parts of the world uh, the children in jerusalem were starving for physical food but children today are starving uh, for spiritual food and um, you know um, uh, there's just no means of just going and ministering to them or giving them uh, what they need uh, they're feeding their spiritual needs or ministering to their spiritual needs uh, so we see that you know we're living in a in a world where the condition is just the same as it was in um, Jerusalem, and you know, Jeru uh, and Jeremiah was accusing the people that you know uh, they they weren't even doing anything to uh, you know provide food for the uh, children. But uh, we are also living in a world where children are neglected. Um, you know, um, they are not fed um, uh, the solid meat from God's word. Um, they are not taught from scripture. They are overlooked as, uh, you know, just being very small and uh, not being able to understand. But they also have spiritual needs like uh, we studied uh, when we looked at their developmental needs. And it's important even as they are, uh, many children are starving um, uh, uh, for spiritual food, it's important that we take uh, spiritual food to them, uh, minister to them, uh, and you know, uh, feed them uh, with God's word. So, you know, children know about God. You know, they know that there is somebody called Jesus, and He died for our sins, but they don't have a personal uh, relationship with God, which is very, very important for us uh, as messengers to communicate. Uh, this message uh, to get them into a personal relationship with God because there's no point in them knowing that there is a God, that knowing there is Jesus, just like they know that, you know, who's the prime minister of their country or the president um, or uh, they, uh, you know, they just know certain celebrities or actors and actresses, uh, but they don't have a personal relationship with them. And it's so also when it comes to their um, 
understanding of God. They just know about God, but they don't have a personal uh, relationship uh, with him. And some children who kind of, uh, you know, uh, come to church uh, regularly, they're part of children's church or Sunday school, you know, um, uh, like Paul says, they have a form of godliness, but deny its power. Okay, so they know about God, they know all of the narratives in the Bible, they know every story in the Bible, but um, they don't have that personal connect with God, they don't have that personal relationship with God, um, and also they don't have that personal, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 life transforming uh, encounter with God, which, uh, you know, uh, gets them to know who God is. Uh, to know that the Holy Spirit is in them, the power, the presence of the Holy Spirit in their lives uh, that will enable them uh, to do great things for God, to enable them to overcome their uh, challenges. So, um, you know, um, this, there is a tremendous need uh, that can be met uh, only if uh, God's people, only if the messengers, you know, pray as Jeremiah prayed, and not just pray, but also meet the need that is uh, there. So we see that Jeremiah was so burdened, you know, he not only cried out to God and prayed, but he also did something, you know, he, uh, uh, you know, he spoke to the parents and said, come on, do something uh, to meet the needs. Let's do something uh, as a people to meet the needs of these children who are dying on the uh, streets. So even as we look around, you know, we see, see children uh, lost at a very young age. Uh, their innocence is lost at a very, very young age, uh, you know, uh, children even in grade one the things that they know i wouldn't have known when i was in grade eight or nine and you know uh, things have changed uh, media has influenced so much of their mindsets uh, their understanding of um, various things and uh, you know at a very young age children lose their uh, innocence they are so exposed to every uh, filth and uh, evil in this world and uh, so there is a tremendous need and first of all you know even as um, uh, you might not be somebody who's ministering to children uh, you can pray like uh, Jeremiah prayed and if you are in a place of um, you know uh, uh, where you are a pastor you're overseeing a church or an elder, uh, you know, or uh, you have a, a fellowship meeting in your uh, home, you know, just don't uh, address or meet or teach um, adults, but also cater, make sure that something is done to, uh, or someone is there to minister to children because uh, they are also part of the, uh, the, the family of God. Um, they also uh, have their spiritual needs that need to be met. If not, they will be starving and they will be, they will die at their, their spirit man will, uh, who that is already dead, will remain dead, you know, for the rest of their uh, lives. So we need to meet the need that is uh, there. And just like, um, and Jeremiah says, you know, the young children are asking for bread, but no one breaks it for them, just like uh, we read in Lamentation chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. You know, um, we have the bread of life, that is the word of God, um, you know, and the question is, but who will take it to uh, the perishing millions? There are millions of children who are perishing uh, without knowing the good news, without knowing uh, Jesus as their Lord and Savior, without uh, receiving uh, salvation. So we have the bread of life, uh, but we need to take this bread of life to them. So, you know, to give this bread of life to children, uh, there are two main components. One is a messenger. The other is um, uh, the message. Um, so the messenger and the message or the messenger and the methods that we use, uh, you know, uh, that are needed to proclaim the message or the good news of the gospel or the good news of salvation, the good news of Jesus Christ, uh, you know, uh, can be done through the empowering of the Holy uh, Spirit. So the, that is uh, the advantage that we have. You know, we don't have to uh, do things on our own. Uh, we have the anointing, the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit, we have the empowering of the Holy Spirit who um, helps us. Okay, so as uh, children's church uh, or Sunday school teachers or ministers, um, are we in an important position? Yes, no. Okay, yes, we are. 
yes okay thank you uh, uh, so why do you think we are in an important position for those of you who are in administering to children uh, why do you think you're in an important position yes sasha um, because god has appointed us to uh, be among the children and our hearts are for them and plus he keeps accountable of uh, like we are we are his masterpiece and we're once he called us to be among the children and we have to be faithful and honest and also how we treat them yeah okay thank you asha so it's a calling yes just like uh, uh, different people have calling to be a pastor apostle uh, evangelist um, you know a uh, uh, missionary um, uh, uh, it's we also has have a calling as a teacher to minister to uh, children um, and uh, yes um, like kennedy says we are the bridge uh, yes go ahead say you had your hand up and then we'll go on to charles Yes, same, almost the same thing as Charles. Basically, we are uh, intermediaries between the, the generation past and then the generation upcoming. So we're strategically placed there to see the continuity of the kingdom of God here on earth through the children who are to come after the generation already uh, in place. So that's a strategic position and very important um, position if we are missing then it just means that it will be the same case as the children of israel whereby they knew nothing about what god had done in the previous generation there will be that gap so because of our importance or rather the function we have you know in ensuring the continuity of the gospel the kingdom of god on earth to the next generation that makes our position or position of teacher children teachers very very strategic and very important thank you uh, say yes uh, you know it's important that one generation passes on uh, the truths uh, the doctrines um, the word of god uh, to the uh, the next generation and also important to uh, you know get them to a place where you know uh, where we are uh, in one level of glory um, where we are tasting, uh, if you look at, uh, you know, uh, the past generations, the people have moved on from, uh, you know, their understanding of God. It was just in, like in the Old Testament, they knew about uh, God the Father. They had a vague understanding of the Holy Spirit. But in the New Testament, we have an understanding of God the Father, uh, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, uh, uh, the, the, the person of the Trinity, three persons of the Trinity. Um, Oh, we have an understanding about uh, who uh, the second person, the Trinity. We have a, a, a good understanding of, uh, and then you know the whole uh, uh, the person and work of uh, the Holy Spirit, the third person, the Trinity. Uh, that became even more clearer as the generations passed. Uh, the work of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, uh, how to flow in the gifts and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Uh, it just becomes the light becomes much, or the manifestation, or the the revelations of the truth becomes even more evident and more clearer as uh, uh, through the generations and so we are here in a, 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 a in a generation where we are you know enlightened on various aspects uh, where we are reached we have come to one level of glory but if we don't pass that on to children then they can fall back and go back to you know uh, past generations from where they began so we need to uh, not just teach them God's word but get them to that level of glory where the adult church is in so that when they come into adult church they are able to move on uh, to the next level that God wants them or wants to take them to the next level of glory uh, so that the church is just uh, you know accelerating in its space of um, uh, knowing God of experiencing um, uh, the manifestations of his revelation uh, the truths in his word and just glory going from one level of glory to uh, uh, another yes Thank you for that, uh, Say. Uh, over to Charles. Yes, Charles. Uh, thank you so much, Pastor. Um, I am continuing to agree with the connectivity. Like we, we are in an important position because we are standing between children and God. But also we are in an important position because 
the, the children are the future. Therefore, uh, if we do not work upon them, then they will be lost. So we will lose the track and we will be like, again, the, the Israelites, like in the book of Judges, when people who knew God were over and then everyone was doing their own thing. So I think we are in this important position so that we can speak to those that have a future. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Charles. Yes, like Kung says, we are taking the responsibility of bringing them, uh, 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 bringing the word to them. Uh, Rupa says we're investing into their lives, passing on the knowledge of God. Um, Asha says we are the examples uh, to the little lives that are watching every move and character and action. Uh, uh, we are the life uh, sower in, uh, into those precious ones. Yes, we're sowing the seeds of life um, into these little ones. And uh, yeah, Kennedy says we are here to fulfill uh, God's call over our lives. Yes, um, God has called us. We will look at it you know, to be teachers as well. So uh, teaching is also a ministry office that God calls us to. And so teaching uh, children also is very, very um, important. So yes, you know, uh, as children church teachers or Sunday school teachers, we are in such an important position. We looked at um, uh, various, uh, uh, you know, thoughts that were shared with various people. Thank you for your um, insights. Um, so why, um, you know, as children's church teachers, we are in such uh, an important uh, position because, um, you know, what we teach or what you teach, uh, you know, continues to influence how they think, feel and act, uh, not at just that uh, age that they are in, but will continue to influence how they think, feel and act for the rest of their um, lives. Now, why, what could cause a teacher, uh, you know, to influence uh, how children think, feel and act, uh, you know, for the rest of their lives or in that present age and for, uh, you know, their growing um, uh, years is, um, you know, probably four things that we can uh, look at. The first thing is, you know, how a teacher and can uh, have a huge impact or a big impact in these young ones life what could cause a teacher to have such an impact in young ones lives the first thing is that he or she should be well prepared uh, and employs effective methods uh, that you know is able to trigger the young ones um, uh, you know mindsets their uh, internal motivation motivation um, and give them the freedom you know uh, uh, challenge them to uh, apply what they uh, they are learning uh, to implement uh, what they are learning uh, in their own uh, situation so give them the freedom how they want to implement it the areas what they uh, want to uh, uh, they want to implement what you have thought or uh, you know practice or apply what you have uh, thought so you know uh, as teachers you know as messengers we need to be uh, well prepared uh, and we need to employ uh, good effective methods to communicate uh, what we are teaching to them when we do that you know it will kind of motivate uh, the young ones to basically uh, think through uh, will bring them uh, uh, from inside out will cause them to uh, will challenge them to act on what you are teaching them uh, 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 to take uh, uh, you know uh, to take the uh, responsibility to uh, apply what you are teaching them uh, because they're internally motivated and that uh, and also you know your your method your teaching is challenging them uh, to do things to act on things to apply things in their own uh, framework in which they have their own freedom in the way they want to do things uh, but uh, important thing is that we need to be well prepared and you know employ effective uh, methods the second thing is that uh, you know we treat these young ones uh, as you know uh, uh, competent and intelligent uh, individuals uh, we don't look at them as children who can just you know we can go score say something to them you know just narrate a story just tell them something because you know they're not adults they're not going to judge us they're not going to uh, look back into the word of God and see whether what we're saying is right or not it just you know 
just accept everything that we we learn they just accept everything uh, that uh, they we tell them as the truth as uh, you know uh, the right thing and um, you know they just receive it uh, from us but that does not mean that you know we don't prepare well that we don't uh, uh, you know uh, uh, right have our lesson plan we don't have our curriculum in in place our lesson plans in place um, you know if we treat children as children who are are uh, competent and intelligent beings, uh, you know, uh, and, uh, you know, we would work on all of these things. We would work on a good curriculum. We would work on, uh, you know, uh, preparing our lesson, just like we would do for an adult church where we prepare a sermon. We're going to speak to youth or we're going to speak to uh, adults, you know, we would take the time to uh, look at God's word, write out the points, think of illustrations, examples, because we don't want to go and make a fool of ourselves uh, because adults know what we are talking, right? But when it comes to children, we can uh, underestimate them think that we can say anything and because they just receive everything from us and that is uh, not the right attitude it's important that we prepare uh, and go and speak to them as if they are competent intelligent uh, uh, individuals uh, who respond appropriately to everything that we are teaching them or uh, telling them the next thing is the third thing is that you know um, uh, the messenger, the teacher should be somebody who's loving, who loves the children, uh, who's godly, uh, you know, who is also uh, uh, having that personal connect with God, personal relationship uh, with God, who loves the Lord, who's feeding on his word, um, who is encountering God uh, and has encountered God uh, and is continuing to encounter God so that they can share uh, from their own life examples, their own uh, testimonies, their uh, their own walk with God. But if they are, have grown stale in their relationship with God, then, you know, what we are giving to children will be something that is stale. And you know what happens when we eat stale food? It's not going to uh, strengthen our bodies, but it's going to weaken us. It's going to um, you know uh, uh, cause us to be sick so you know the messenger the teacher should be loving godly uh, should be concerned uh, for the young ones in a sense that you know concerned in the sense that they should be uh, uh, so concerned that you know they're praying for them mentoring them involved in their personal lives and concerned to an extent where they are spending time just uh, 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 you know, uh, receiving from God so that they can impart the truths. Um, also, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, aiding themselves or, uh, you know, uh, equipping themselves in a way that they can communicate the truths in an effective way to children, understanding uh, the children, the ages that they are in, what are the challenges, what are their needs, you know, that is the meaning of concern for the uh, young ones. Not just concern that, hey, they're going to perish and die. Uh, uh, if we know we don't share uh, salvation uh, well that is important but you know it also has a wider spectrum to the whole thing of uh, our concern for these young ones and uh, we need to also be uh, uh, teachers who are willing to share our lives with the young ones because not just teaching them doctrines or the truths from God's word but um, how we ourselves are applying that truth, living that truth, like Asha said, we need, it's important that we live the truth, that they see it in our own lives, and, you know, they're learning from our actions, our character, and our um, and lifestyle. Uh, the last one, the fourth one, uh, we can add more to the list, but I'm just mentioning four things that would, you know, uh, help a teacher to have an impact, a greater impact in the lives of the young ones. The fourth one is um, that he or she is interested uh, not in just imparting truths uh, uh, from God's word, just teaching them doctrines, uh, but concerned uh, with the overall development of the uh, child. So not just their uh, spiritual development, but also the emotional, their mental, um, uh, uh, their social uh, you know, uh, uh, faculties, their, uh, uh, you know, areas of their life. Uh, so it goes beyond just ministering to them spiritually, but also, you know, on one-on-one, -on -one, uh, helping them out, mentoring them, praying for them, addressing, 
the concerns that they're going through, the needs that they are uh, uh, they're facing, the challenges, uh, and just being there to help them and minister to them. So uh, just four points that, you know, uh, would cause a teacher to have an impact or a greater impact on uh, children's life. Yes, um, Charles, you have your hand up. Yes, Charles? OK. Uh, we'll wait for Charles when he, maybe he's having connectivity issues. So we'll continue. Uh, when excellent uh, teaching methods, you know, when you use excellent teaching methods, you prepare your lesson well. You have, uh, you know, all of your resources that you're using, like pictures, PowerPoints, videos, activities, games. Uh, object lessons, you know, when you're using t excellent teaching methods and uh, and that is combined with a deep, genuine concern for the young ones, you know, the uh, children will find it extremely difficult, uh, uh, you know, uh, not to learn. Uh, it, they'll also, uh, you know, uh, not be, uh, 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 you know, uh, discouraged or will not be motivated to come to Children's Church. They would want to come to uh, Children's Church because, uh, the classes are very exciting for them. Uh, you know, the methods you're using is, uh, you know, is appealing to their learning styles, their intelligences. And also you have a deep concern and a love for them, which they're able to see. And that will cause them to come uh, to Children's Church. That will cause them to listen to you. Uh, there will be a reduction in, uh, or uh, there will be uh, uh, very less of behavioral problems that you will have to um, you know, cater to or minister because they would just be uh, interested in what you're teaching them. They would be excited. And also, you know, they would come to a place where they're not just listening to you, just attending children's church because they have to, but uh, they would also apply what they you are uh, teaching them. Okay. So uh, as a teacher, you can, you know, keep these four points in mind and work on these four points, uh, which will help you to be an excellent teacher and will just be able to help you to impart the truths, what you want them to know. And also it will get them to, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, help children to um, uh, apply what they're learning and you will see a transformation in their lives. You will see God working in a path full way in their uh, lives. Any questions so, so far? Anything anyone wants to say? Charles, are you there? Okay. Uh, there are no questions. We'll move on. So uh, like uh, some of you already said, that you know, uh, those of you or those of us who are ministering in children's church, uh, we sometimes think that, you know, uh, uh, teaching children is not a divine call uh, but uh, you know it's not a very important role uh, like those comp uh, compared to those who are uh, worship leaders or you know uh, or in the worship team or those who are preaching teaching evangelists missionaries uh, you know pastors uh, we sometimes undermine our call or underestimate our call and think our, our call is not an important call our role is not an important uh, role but it is because if you look at um, Ephesians chapter Chapter 4, verses 11 and 12. Uh, can somebody read that, please? Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 and 12. Can I read, Pastor? Yeah, sure. Please go ahead, Asha. It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. Amen. Thank you, Asha. So here we see that, you know, it's Jesus Christ himself, uh, you know, who calls different people to different ministry offices. Uh, so some are called to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. Um, and, you know, we don't go, uh, okay, the apostle is the greatest, and then is the prophet, and then is um, uh, the uh, uh, evangelist, and then is uh, the pastors, and then our teachers. No, we don't look at that in, uh, you know, in order of uh, priority or uh, the way that it's stated here, but all of these 
if you see, it says that all of these ministry offices uh, is important for the equipping of the saints. Saints are basically those who are believers, part of the church, uh, for the work of ministry and for the edifying of the body of uh, Christ. So edifying the body of Christ, children are part of the body of Christ. Uh, so we are edifying them and uh, we are so, you know, this role of a teacher is a calling, you know, um, uh, and this is a ministry office that uh, Jesus, uh, you know, or God assigns to a few of us. Few of us are called to different uh, offices. Uh, you know, we have the gifts of the Spirit, which is, you know, is given to everybody. We read that in First Corinthians chapter 12. Uh, we have uh, the membership gifts and talents so we are part of uh, you know we we ministered in uh, various areas uh, in the body of christ but uh, here in um, uh, the the offices that specifically the offices uh, in the body of christ is you know specifically given by god himself chosen it's a calling for appointed few a selected few uh, so among them is a teacher so if you are called to be a children's church teacher children's church minister then you need to know that your calling or your role is a very very important uh, one you know it might you might not be in the limelight uh you might not be uh you know we don't have children going up on stage and saying this and that and testifying and all of that uh like we see in adult church you know it's it goes unnoticed very often uh but that should not be your, uh, you know, what you are looking at, uh, but what is done in secret will be rewarded in the open. You know, you're basically edifying this, uh, this part of this body of Christ, which is very, very important, and that is children. So please consider your role as an important one, uh, just as you would look at, you know, an apostle, a prophet, an evangelist, a, and a pastor. Your role is very important. Your calling is very important. And we need to live up to that calling that God has uh, called us um, uh, to. Okay. We see that Jesus was one of the greatest teachers. He is the greatest teachers in all time, you know, um, and uh, he magnified the work of a, a teacher. Uh, you know, we see that uh, Jesus preached and he also. Uh, thought he was a preacher and a teacher but what do you think uh, most often was he a preacher or was he a teacher he were, I, I, I feel Jesus had a balance I think okay. he had the balance he, 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 he was able to know when to preach to declare and proclaim and then he was able to know when to instruct the people in the word I think he just had a balance I can't really say if it was there was one that was more than the other. I think it was just balanced. That's, that, that's my own viewpoint. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. Say anyone else? Uh, Avni says a teacher. Uh, Kung says most of the time it says that he taught. Uh, Avni says he's known as a rabbi. Yes, thank you. Uh, my opinion, we can differ on uh, our opinions. Um, I, I also think he was, even though he was both a preacher and a teacher, but uh, he was called a teacher more than a preacher, okay? Uh, how is a preacher different from a teacher? Is there a difference between a preacher and a teacher? And if there is a difference, how are these two roles different? Uh, they're not different, but uh, a preacher is also a teacher. I think in the modern church we differentiate them, but in the old time, uh, a teacher and a preacher would read the uh, uh, Torah and then explain what it means. So there wasn't much difference back then. Okay, yes, back then, yeah, you're right, uh, Mangi. Maybe back then there was not much difference between a preacher and a teacher. Like now we have you know, uh, 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 you know, preaching and, uh, you know, uh, uh, how a, a style of a preacher, how, what is the competence required for a, a person to be a good preacher and all of the things that we, uh, we learn. Yes. Uh, but in those days, maybe there was not much of a difference between a preacher and a teacher. And, uh, you're right. Yes. Uh, Charles, you have your hand up. 
is there okay okay if not say yes um, there, there is a difference between a preacher and a teacher a preacher is someone who proclaims who heralds you know who announces um in, in the case of jesus he was announcing the kingdom he was preaching about the kingdom he was proclaiming the kingdom you know so he proclaimed the good news to the people but when he came to teaching he was structured methodic methodically uh, methodical sorry for my english um he had a pattern in which he brought out the truths from the word so it was more of instruction rebuking in some cases you know um expounding on truths bringing out more truths from the torah so there is a difference in terms of structure and delivery um preaching just means announcing something that's um possibly not known or known but teaching goes deeper in expounding on the truth bringing out more um um, more in more knowledge basically um, in a structured and uh, methodic methodically methodical way yeah <laughs> yes you got the word now <laughs> thank you say yes uh yes asha says a teacher is a person who delivers the message and a teacher is the one who teaches okay uh so you know the task of a teach a preacher is uh, to uh you know um reproof uh, to rebuke to press it home uh, so that it's acted upon like we read in um second uh, timothy chapter 4 or uh, verse 2 second timothy chapter 4 verse 2 says preach the word be ready in season and out of season convince rebuke exhort with all long suffering and teaching so basically it is uh you know uh, a preacher is exhorting the people he's uh you know rebuking them uh, reproving them and you know pressing home the point so that it is acted um, upon but a teacher you know the primary task is to uh, instruct you know to teach to train to coach uh, to teach tutor so uh basically uh like say you were saying a teacher teaches a fact simplifies the truth um is that there okay okay teaches the facts you know uh simplifies uh the truth um and then um you know um simplifies the truth uh, illustrates it, gives uh, various examples to illustrate it of course a preacher also does that as well uh, applies the truth which also a preacher uh, does nowadays we have people uh, doing all of this you know um, and then uh, but for a teacher the teacher is looking uh, for a response uh, uh, in a more personal way uh, a response of course even a preacher uh, does uh, you know ask for a response in you know uh, asking people to pray commit their life dedicate their life or you know uh, receive uh, Jesus as a Lord and Savior raise up their hand altar call and all of that but does not happen on a very regular basis so there is a, a lot of teaching components that uh, you know kind of uh, 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 is also there in preaching but but you know um for uh, uh, in teaching when a teacher is teaching you know basically gives um uh, uh the people that they're teaching uh, an opportunity to ask questions uh, there's a time for discussion uh, you know or uh, the the teacher discusses with them tries to reiterate the points through discussion what they have learned uh, to just ensure that what the truth that has been, uh, you know, communicated has been understood, and then the teacher goes on to help uh, those they are teaching how to apply the truth, and then they look for response uh, to uh, it. So a teacher is more than a preacher in the sense that uh, not only teaches the facts but simplifies the truth, you know, illustrates it, uh, applies the truth, looks for a response, and then the teacher gives an opportunity for questions, um, 
and uh, discussion to be sure that the truth has been understood and you know uh, you know helps uh, uh, the person or uh, the audience you know how to apply the truth and then look for response to it so the teacher comes back you know uh, the following week and then is uh, uh, you know looking for a response and how they have acted on uh, what uh, the uh, what the teacher has uh, taught so yes there is a lot of components of teaching that is involved in uh, in preaching but then it is uh, a much deeper uh, 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 when it comes to uh, teaching because uh, there are more components of uh, you know, giving opportunities for questions discussing making sure the truth has been understood and also uh, helping uh, them know how to apply the truth and looking for um, a response. So, uh, yes, you know, in that sense, uh, you know, we need to ensure that when we are teaching, uh, we uh, in uh, involving all of these aspects, all of these comp components, uh, and not just be a, a, a preacher, but uh, you know, to be a teacher in the fullest sense. Yes, Christopher, you have your hand up. We take a question and then we'll end class. Uh, yes, Pastor. I was just just wanting to add that, uh, you know, when, when Jesus taught uh, to the to the crowds, uh, you know, he spoke in parables, and uh, I think that was just his way of being able to uh, explain things, uh, you know, using using stories and uh, you know, using parables uh, to explain that. But when he when he when he spoke uh, sometimes uh, to his disciples, uh, he spoke he explained it in, in a more direct way and um, that would uh, that i mean i think yeah, i can't remember the bible reference to this but you know there was there was a time when jesus actually referred to this you know why he was talking in parables and why you know he was uh, then he would he would then be able to then he would actually go and explain it in a, in a much more direct way to his to say to his apart to the disciples or his apostles yeah so just thought i'll just add that yes Thank you. Uh, so we see that Jesus is, yes, in, in, in that sense, you know, he was more like a preacher, uh, but also uh, had a lot of components of uh, teaching uh, because there were a lot of questions that were uh, people asked. He would answer them, discuss with them uh, and, uh, and all of those things. So, you know, as a teacher, we need to uh, make sure that, you know, if you're teaching children, you have... Uh, uh, all of these components or you are addressing all of these components that we just uh, looked at so that you can be an effective uh, uh, teacher. Okay, thank you all for uh, joining class. Um, uh, there are no more questions or um, uh, any of your thoughts that you want to share? We'll Yes, yes, say. Sorry, quickly, very quickly, Padma. Uh, what was the passage again? In, did you say Second Timothy or First Timothy about teaching and preaching? Yes, first, uh, Second Timothy chapter four, verse two. Second Timothy four, two. Thank you. Thank you yes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for joining class and for all your inputs. Um, uh, I'll see you for our next class on children's ministry on um, Wednesday. Thank you. <laughs>